So hello everyone and welcome to our second part of lesson one here at P101 online course. Uh, now we will go to we are going to work with some uh, consonants. So I can give you a pretty uh, a pretty a great idea of how those sounds work in Portuguese. So we can go on with our other sections. All right. So. Most consonants in Brazilian Portuguese have the same sound as in English. And I will point out some ex exceptions in the following uh, minutes. Alright? So, let's go. Let's start with here in our consonants work. Let's start with uh, letter C. All right. So the letter C. Uh, it actually a word. Uh, the letter C that begins a word uh, usually sounds like a K in in English. For example, we have the word cafe, which means coffee. So cafe. All right. The word. Casa, casa, which means house. But we can also have a different uh, thing here, which is the cedilha. This is the cedilha. You know, you have uh, the letter C with uh, this hook-shaped mark here under uh, the letter. And it makes a different sound. Let's see here. In the word França, França, you can see that it uh, has a uh, S sound, you know, so that's quite simple. We have the word ser, vi, so, so again, serviço, right, which means uh, service, all right? And the most common use, actually, of this cedilha is when it comes with uh, followed by um. So it usually uh, it's used with this and in uh, words. For example, in the word evolução. So here we have, and in the word um, evolução means evolution, and again here in the word promoção, which is actually a sales, you know, sale discount or sales promotion. So this promotion, this show and this evolution and is usually connect to this sound and in evolução and promoção. That's okay. Let's move on. So with let's go to letter D. Letter D it's this sound is actually like a hard D, you know, like in English we have uh, the word uh, let's see a word here the word dançar the verb here which means to dance so dançar the word data which means the date as in calendar date All right we have also a d that can come this d can come in the middle of a word and it can have either a hard D sound or a J sound, you know, like uh, in the word uh, jelly, you know. So, for example, we can have advogado. So, here we pronounce advogado, advogado, like jelly, advogado, which means lawyer. Right, lawyer, attorney, 
and we can have for example uh, the word estado all right so again with the D here we can have uh, the word uh, pedir the verb pedir which means to ask we have the word liberdade da te which means uh, freedom all right now the letter G letter G is in Portuguese usually is a hard G like in the word go so we can have the word gato which means cat the word governo which means government the word Segundo, which means uh, second, all right? But the letter G takes an G, G sound, G sound, like in treasures, when it's followed by an E or I. So it's a G sound, you know? A treasure, all right? So we can have that sound in the word B O L O G A so biologia or in the word gente gente which means people all right so this treasure sound biologia gente all right Let's move on. We have the letter H. So here, uh, this is a pretty versatile uh, consonant. If the word begins with an H, the letter is then silent, so you don't pronounce it. For example, in the word honesto, so you begin speaking by the O, so honesto, all right? The word ora. which means our, again, you don't pronounce the H, right? So, ora. In the case of words that contain LH or NH, the H sounds like an Y, you know? We can have the word compa ni ah. So here we have uh, this different uh, sound. Then we have compania. So it looks like an Y, you know, right there in the middle. Okay. You can have the word uh, Espanha. Espanha, which means Spain. Or the word mara v lio so, which means marvelous or amazing. We can have the word the letter J. So the letter J is actually pretty. Uh, uh, it looks like a G sound, G sound, you know, like the uh, S makes in the word uh, treasure, as we saw before. So we can have the word Jo Helio, Jo Helio, treasure, Jo Helio, which means the knee, your body, the knee. We can have the word. Julio, 
julho, which is the month July. The word loja, loja, which means uh, store, like the place where you buy things. Then we have the letter L. The letter L normally sounds like the L in English, so we have the word gelo, which is ice. The word leader, which means leader. And but if it comes at the end of a word, this L sounds like uh, u. You know, like in mil, mil, u, o, or natal, natal, like we if we had a u here in the end. So mil, natal, and mil means uh, one thousand, thousand, and natal is both a Brazilian city or Christmas. All right, so the letters M and N, we can talk about them together. Those two letters in Portuguese generally sound like the uh, M and N in Portuguese. We can have, for example, the word já, né, lá, janela, which means window. We can have the word... Uh, me do me do which means fear the word mel which means honey and the word no which means no but at the end of a word and m or n takes an uh n g sound like we have in Sing or oming the word oming. So sing oming, you know. Uh, here sing means one hundred and oming means man. All right. The letter R. In the case, uh, if the word begins or ends with an R, then the R sounds like an uh, H. So, ho, perto. So, ho, Roberto, like of Harry, you know, or uh, Rosa, right? Which is pink color, you know. Here it's a common uh, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese uh, masculine name. But uh, if the R comes in the middle of a word uh, on the accented syllable, it sounds like an even stronger H. In the words uh, porta, porta, or uh, carta which means door and uh, letter that follow. Uh, you, you can use your belly to push air out of your mouth as you say the H is a brevy H, not a guttural sound, you know? So carta and porta, all right? And if the word has two R's, then you make an H sound like in burro. Buho, you know, and if the R comes at the end of a word, it also makes an H sound like in buho, as you can have in the word ka in the verb ka minyar. Ka minyar, all right, which is the verb to walk, okay. It's usually used in verb and is in the infinitive version. Then we have the letter S, which is generally pronounced the same as in the English S, except it often becomes a Z sound in the end of a word. 
so the word dedos which means fingers the word um, olhos which means uh, eyes and s between two vowels also makes a z sound like in the word casa or coisa all right so coisa is like the word thing you know and how casa is house all right the letter t uh, the letter T in Portuguese has a soft T sound. In general, in English, you don't use a soft T sound very often. So we can have uh, this uh, verb here, atuar, which means to act. We have the word moto or motocicleta. which is the motorcycle which is pretty common here in Brazil but the T sounds like an CH and when followed by an E or an I for example here in forte the word forte would be like we have a CH in the end sound you know forte or Passaporte The word forte means strong and passaporte is passport passport have the letter W W the letter W doesn't naturally occur in Portuguese but when it does it sounds like an V it, you actually only have that in a person's name, you know, like we can have uh, Vanderlei or Osvaldo. You can have this name also with a V here, actually. And then we have the X. The X has generally an H sound, an SH sound in Portuguese, like uh, the word bruxa, the sound, and uh, lixo. Bruxa means witch, and lixo means garbage. The letter X can also have an KS sound, X sound, uh, in some words. Here, for example, in the word toxico, which means toxic. All right, and it can finally uh, also sound like an Z in some cases. For example, in the word e zami so it looks like an z e zami all right which means uh, xm that's okay so this is the end of uh, our part 2 of lesson one here with p101 thank you very much